Alright, back to another episode of Practically Programming. I'm going to take a look at uh, what it's like to be a senior software engineer, SRE, um, almost 20 years of experience, and uh, still got to struggle and test and learn and read a lot of docs and whatever. Um, semi-pro. <laughs> we're going to take a look at this Golang application that we're working on. We've got a CLI tool that's uh, going to build 
artifacts from a go commit and create a tag, push the release up, and then upload the artifacts. So we had gotten to, uh, I think we had just uh, gotten the commit option to work and um, at the moment just outputting uh, that we do have the commit. So this is the code that we were working on here. We were struggling with it a lot yesterday, uh, last week. And uh, Hey, what's going on, sub? Good to see you. <laughs> I like it. Plotting and planning, huh? I'm down. Looking forward to uh, tomorrow. We're going to play some D&D, &D, folks. I haven't played in a very long time. Something like... Well, since high school, so long, long time. But I'm looking forward to it. Um, right now, though, we're going to try and figure out. We got, I think we got the commit ish checkout to work. Um, and if we run the command we were testing with, um, the idea here is we're going to use. Uh, just passing in tag v0.1 as a placeholder right now, but we want to try to check out this one commit-ish for that repository. And I think we got it working because uh, it clones the repository and then switches into that commit. It's got the PGP signature, it's got my email, um, some other information. But this was definitely uh, the initial commit or the commit that we're looking for so I think it's working the way we want it to work and we can remove some of these uh, print statements we still have it printing the hash there the function um, checkout commit -ish. right so in the run function what we're doing is we're parsing the gate URL that's provided in the um, config file or via command line creating a temporary directory um, deferring Remove all that temporary directory, cloning the repository into that temporary directory um, using a specific branch if we've been provided one. Um, we're doing a little bit of validation. And then, uh, if we have a commit ish, the idea is we're going to try to check that commit ish out, which is what we had done. And then, um, we're going to try to get the git log at least. Return that. I think that's as far as we got. We're printing the log. I don't see the... Oh yeah, there it is. Yep. So we're printing the log here. Um, the log object anyway. We're not actually printing the log. A useful log. Um, other than the fact that it's the initial commit. So I guess it is useful. But... So we don't need to collect the log though. That was for troubleshooting. So we're definitely checking out the commit. And then uh, that makes me wonder if we should specify the branch at all. Um, let's check the commit issue. Hey, Squid Moth. <laughs> hey, that's fair. Um, I don't think there's any custom emotes in this uh, um, channel anyway. So uh, honestly, I'm, I'm pretty new to Twitch myself. I've been watching for maybe less than a year and streaming for less than that. So, <laughs> so hello. Thanks for coming. We're doing a little programming this afternoon. 
So let's see, let's see. I guess if we don't have a commit, we need to go ahead and just not, um, not worry about it. We can keep the function, I guess, the check in here if we want. Say, uh, if the commit ish is an empty string. repository. We'll just return the same repo. Return the repo. And uh, no error. <laughs> hey, I like those. Nice. Vohio and hey guys. Very, very cool. Thanks, Sub. Alright, this way if no commit is provided, there's not going to be an error. We'll still have the branch, um, if it was provided, checked out. Otherwise, we'll have head checked out, which uh, should be what we need there. That's the workflow I think we need, right? So, they provide either a branch, the default, or the commitish. And yeah, so if there's a if there is a branch, we check out the branch. If there's a commitish, we check out the commitish. They should be mutually exclusive. So let's see if clone repo is not there. Or is if there's no branch provided a clone repo, what do we do with that? Like with clone repo, we're not actually using the branch yet. Wonder if that was some troubleshooting. Hey, Dr. Phineas, how's it going? Good to see you. Hey, <laughs> I like that uh, emoji you've got there, the, the ASCII. Looks like you're wearing a helmet. That's fantastic. I like it. Very dwarfy. <laughs> I might, uh, I might have to start using that one. All right, so we're taking a branch. Yeah, we're not actually doing anything with the branch though, so we need to double check that. It's the Solaire emoji. I don't know Solaire. All right, so this, uh, I think we had figured this out though, so ideally oops. Yeah, so if there's not a branch, we just go ahead and get um, I think I'm undoing all my troubleshooting anyway <laughs> Oh, it's the character from Dark Souls, okay very cool. I have not played Dark Souls, but I've heard it's uh, pretty dark. <laughs> so I don't think we need this. I don't think we need this health statement. So let's go ahead and make that. Uh, I think that was for troubleshooting. So basically what we want to do is just use basic clone op ops, which should check out the head. Um, unless there's a branch name, in which case we add the reference name for the branch as the clone ops reference name. And we just go ahead and set clone ops single branch because we only want the one. It should make it slightly faster. So let's double check that that works. Say ignore the committish. We want to go with branch. Oh, what branches do I have? Let me go ahead and grab the repository I was using to test. Just a simple GoLang Hello World repository. All 
uh, test branch. Good thinking of me. All right, so let's see what happens here. We're gonna go ahead and uh, have it bomb out at, uh, at the run as well. There we go. So after we clone the branch, let's just go ahead and stop there. Oh man, I was looking at some, working on some Python this morning, and it was giving me all kind of problems because you know Python modules don't always have capital letters. Go, uh, you know, they almost I think they always do the, the sub packages or whatever. And I could not get my muscle memory to work right with the Python. Let me tell you, it took me probably twice as long to write what I was going to write just because I kept typing the package names wrong. Okay, yeah, so it looks like it checked out a branch. Um, let me go ahead and cancel the defer and we can go check on that too, so. I don't know why these headphones have started uh, turning themselves off, but it certainly is frustrating. All right. So we'll check out test branch. It's going to be cloned into this directory. So we should be able to come in here. Yep. Okay. So it definitely checked out the branch. So that's working. Our commit is working. We're making some serious progress. All right. So let's see. Um, I'm going to double check these functions real quick. Anything that's parsing or printing, I want to make sure that we're printing the right stuff. So. to remove that repository now and yeah there's the problem I'm gonna get some of that oh. there we go gotta get some of that sweet sweet uh, carriage return action going I'll make sure we got it everywhere we need it Okay, so back in the run, I think we're making some real progress here. So we parse the URL, create, create the temporary directory, excuse me. Um, defer removal of the temporary directory, clone the repository. If there, uh, it checks the repository. I don't recall what we were doing with that post clone validation. Yeah, okay, it's just checking some some variables, some uh, information. Um, check out the commitish. If it doesn't, if it's not provided, we just return. Okay, then we should create a tag. So we're gonna try to create the V1 tag. We're gonna go with the very first commitish. So let's uh, exit here. I need to learn how to use the stepping debugger for Go. That would make things a lot easier. 
Perhaps I'll do that for the next stream. I've got a coworker who wrote a video on how to do it for operators, and I need to, to study that, and then uh, we'll test out some stepping debugging. That'd be nice. All right. So let's see if this creates or prompts us to create a tag, or tells us that there one exists already, because I think there one ex already exists. OK. Excellent. So we're going to use that hash. It says the tag already exists, and what I like to continue using the tag. Check the code. Okay, prompt for a tag message. Input it in from the editor. Removes comments and sets the tag. So I believe it overwrites the tag. Yeah, we should be overwriting the tag in that repository. And we can check that, I think. Let's see. Um, it's probably easiest to check it with GitHub. to the hash that begins with 968C07F. And this should replace it with the hash that begins with 38599F. So let's see what happens. Um, let's see if it did anything. Hold on, let's try that again. Must be bombing out somewhere that I'm not expecting. We are setting the tag. Should be pushing the tags. Let me double check run. Yeah, we're exiting there. So we should have a new tag. We should be pointing to something else. I think we're missing something here, so let's see. Let's add some debugging. see okay apparently apparently I I've gone into this thinking that if there was already a tag you would just use the existing tag <coughs> which I guess is fine but we're not checking out that tag So I think we need to double check 
the tag ahead of time. Because at the moment, it doesn't know about it until later. So I think, well, either that or give it a force option, like overwrite maybe. But either way, we're no longer, um, no longer taking a tag in the right spot, right? Let's see. Well, no. So we've already we've already made the checkout with the committish or the branch. Yeah, so I need another function. I need a function for checking the tag and I need to split it out of the create tag. Yeah, because then we go and hit we go ahead and try to do the make build using the wrong code base because we've checked out the commitish and we're still working on that. Oh dang it. Thanks, Jared. That browser swaps over. I don't quite know why it does it that way. get to see all the stream manager stuff yeah so yeah I think we need to split the create tag function into two um, we'll make this code here check if the tag exists yeah I think that'll work creates a tag. Creates a tag with these provided annotation. Could change these functions up a little bit. How's it going, Jared? It's good to see you, man. Suppose we want to do blame.
tag as is, and then if it doesn't exist, false nil. Tag does not exist. Here we go. Cool, so now in run, First, uh, check if the tag exists. we want to use the tag otherwise we'll perform all the other functions so We want to check out the tag. Which I think we can do with checkout committish, right? Because committish, a committish is anything that points to a commit. And that can, that can include a tag that points to a commit or a tag that points to a tag that points to a commit. So if we check out the tag, we, I think we can use check out committish to do it. So yeah, let's try that. Um, let's just see what happens. Maybe our code will work even even though we didn't anticipate it working. Let's see. We check out the tag. Let's skip creating a new tag. We're going to use the tag that's there. Unless we want to overwrite the tag. I think we need to support using the tag that's there first. And then we can add the case for overriding it. But let's see if that, uh, if that works. We're just going to leave a tag. No commitish, no branch. Tag already exists. Use the tag. 
And I get an error, reference not found. So, let's see, what kind of reference do we need for checkout committish? So we're going to look at the documentation again. Fraught, though, using a browser in this case has been. So I think we need to support unraveling the tag to its commit. So let's see if there's a function for that. Um, to create tag options, fetch options. There's going to be a tag type, right? Well, tag mode, huh? So there's an all tags function. That's probably going to lead us to the right spot. Okay, so we got clone options that should be getting all the tags by default. So how do we work with tags with this particular library? This may be another documentation episode. Plumbing.hash, I think that's going to be what we're looking for. Let's 
Oh, interesting. Oh no, that's computing the hash. Uh, I was thinking we'd pull the hash out from the um, tag. But that's not what we're looking at there. Object type internal object type integer values from 0 to 7. The map those to the exposed by get. Any object is used to represent any from 0 to 7. It just describes the object type. Let's try this. Um, get 5. Check out tag. Tag example with Go Get Library by Liviu Costia. With a quote from Tim Hawken, of course. All the blogs have quotes by Tim, because he's a pretty smart guy. Okay, there's a clone. Okay. Tag objects. T that name equals tag, then the result is true. What do you do with that? Oh, it looks like you're just checking or returning. Just, yeah, returning true. Okay, that's just checking if it exists. That's checking setting it. So we've already done a bunch of this. I wonder if I actually looked at this at some point. Um, pushing the tag. Oh, but I need to check out the tag. objects so we can look at the tags anyway let's see go back to the code and check if the tag exists Yeah, look, that, that code looks so similar. I must have used his. Must have used his blog post when I was figuring out how the tags worked. <laughs> All right, so we have tags that 4H. What else do we have in T? T dot T dot commit. Excellent. So we should be able to return the commit, right? Or the hash. Let's look at the object to make sure. Object.tag. So it's got a hash. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. Target is the hash of the target object. Plumbing hash of the tag. I think we should be able to check out that hash as well. So we can, if it exists, then we can just take the tag and check out the plumbing hash. And honestly, what we should be doing is not using the variable for hash after this. For the tag after this, we need to start using the uh, actual name, the object for the tag. So 
Let's see if tag exists. So what we need to do is have if the tag exists return tag. Otherwise it would be nil, right? That should work in a second once we fix this, uh, this method. So let's go to that. Sorry, function. It's not a method. And we're going to return do the same thing here. Tag object. Instead of returning true, we're going to return object tag. We need to store T, right? That way we can return it there. I think I've got too many complicated bits here. Let's see. These should really be two different functions. Or sorry, the same function, right? So we've got check tag exists, which then calls tag exists, which basically does the same thing and returns the same stuff. So I think we can consolidate.
take the tag string, we're gonna take the repository, we're gonna return an object tag in an error. Um, set the tag found error. And we're gonna get the list of the tags. If there's an error, we're gonna return nil in the air call this tag object so for each of the tags we return air we're not returning so what we want is I don't know if I need an inline function here. Let's see. can't return anything else. I can only return an error, right? information. Let's see, I need the object. What uh, methods does this have? Hey Darren, how's it going? You might consider making method names syntactically appropriate. If you're returning a boolean, name it if x y, but if you're returning a thing, name it get x or get x from y. Oh, I like that. Thank you. Um, yeah, I like that a lot. I'm going to start looking at doing that. So let's see. If. Uh, There's another that'll help. I wonder if there's like a for each that returns something as well.
place. That returns the objects. Well, that's what we're looking for, for the tags. If the tag exists, return to commit. We need to get the tag object somehow. Right now we've just got a list of the tag objects. Not even a list, a tag iterator. That's not a thing that I'm super familiar with. Iterators. So this looks like this file right here has all the information I need if I could just unpack what it is I'm looking at. So there's tag of type tag. Well, we don't have a type. At the moment, we just have a string, and I need to get the tag from the string. What we can do is say repo tag objects and get a list of tag, and get an iterator, tag iterator. So I wonder if repo Sorry, the browser window again. Um, bow dot get tag. Tag objects, sorry, tag objects. So that returns a new tag iter. I'm gonna have it print some stuff. I think that'll be the easiest thing to do. But let's uh, let's condense both of these functions down. This one down here needs to change. This one is our actual function. If tag exists, you know what? We're just going to say get tag. If it doesn't exist, we'll return nothing. Um, get tag from string.
get the tags. say um, I wonder if I can I should be able to range over the iterator that's what it does right I think we were just looking at this, Darren. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This uh, actually, the majority of this code right here, I suspect I wrote while I was looking at that the first time weeks ago, because it matches up pretty closely with what was in that blog post. <laughs> so good Googling, good Googling. Um, he's doing a lot of stuff with retrieving a list of tags, checking if they exist, and then writing new ones. And what I want to try to do is get the tag itself which I think I can just do ranging over the tags and double checking them. Um, that way I have the tag objects and I can uh, work with the hash information that's in there. Um, at the moment, I just keep working with the string and I'd rather get the tag back and work with that from there on. Um, just convert the string to the tag immediately. The actual tag thing. But before I can run this and test it out, I need to fix it. So. Yeah, I was. Uh, that's that's what I think I'm planning on doing. The I was looking at this here, the built-in tags dot for each iterator, but that only supports a function that returns just the error. It doesn't return the variable, so I've got to create my own. I think. Right. Yeah. 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 Since I'm not looping, I need the variable to be outside the loop. I've got that. I was just trying to work within the. Uh, confines of this built-in and I don't think that's going to work so it's a closure I have heard the word closure I don't I will admit I have no idea what that means um, and I need to look it up <laughs> okay so I guess I can't range over variable of type object tag iter. Hmm. So I need to find some other way of doing that. Um, so maybe the 4-H is the right way to do it. Yeah, but that's only ever going to return... I mean, it's only ever going to work with a function that fits this um, signature function takes an object and returns an error. So how do I how do I iterate over a object dot tag iter? So, right, I don't have my code up, do I? Yeah. This is what I was looking at. Apologies. I was thinking I was going to range over the tag object 
the iter. But that doesn't work. So. But it's not, maybe because it's not a. Well, what's it look like, I guess? Object editor and a store. I'll tag editor up next. Um, Darren, the tag is a string coming in. This is something I've provided uh, as a user, right? I'm, I'm saying I want tag v0.1. And then we use that string. Basically, we get all the tag objects in the repository. Um, and then we would compare the tag name, the string, to the actual object name, right? Um, but I want to do something with that object, and I can't do it with the for each function. So what I would like to do would be to retrieve it, store it as a variable, compare it there, and then you know continue checking. Which I guess I could do with the. It looks like I could do that with the tag editor dot next and it's just be a little more manual right so just say get the return tag editor run next that returns a tag do what i want to do with the tag if it's not an error of io.eof or if it's not an io.eof um and it's not the tag i'm looking for then move on to the next tag so i think I think that might work. Tag iter next. So let's see. Wrong file. So we can say uh, t error is equal to tags dot next. That should return us a tag. Nice. And we can say if error is not equal to nil. And then well, that's not going to work. I need to be able to range over the So I guess basically I need a for loop, right? So So 
Yeah, no doubt. So the for each iterates over each object. Something like var tag object tag. Um, oh, I see what you're saying. So even though the function is returning, is only allowed to return an error, we can set the variable outside the scope. Right. And that would be updated any time, each time it loops over until we get the one that matches. Okay. All right, all right, that would... I like that, okay, let's see. Um, this was down here. So I'm just gonna copy this to a clipboard so I don't lose it. Um, Staring, you're not staring at my browser, okay. Yeah, let me copy all of this just to make sure. Okay, now. Okay. So I've got that. We can remove this and say get tag from string. Okay, so we got the var tag object. And we'll say, uh, what is this complaining about? Doesn't like something somewhere else. That's fine. So that is a closure, huh? Um, not sure if I know what that is in reference to, though. All right. Okay, so we got the tag object. So we can say, like you were saying, if it's the tag, then we can set the tag object equal to T. That's beautiful. I like it. <laughs> and as long as the error is not nil and the error is not a not found error, or if the, if the error is nil, is not nil, error is not found, we'll return nil and the error, otherwise we'll return tag object. Nice. Tags, that's right, I need the tags. So that would be um, uh, tags here equal to repo.get tags. That's my own function, okay. <laughs> it's like, wait a minute, does it have its own? Thing. I think you don't need to return the tag object at the end, it would be nil. Okay, let me look at that in a second. Um, so repo.tag objects. You know, this is kind of cool. This is like pair programming, but with like five of you. <laughs> And if I can get more people to join this stream, maybe it'll be like pair programming with like 20 people. That'd be the best. Get all the options, all the knowledge. 
all in one place. Okay, and if tag uh, exists, then we're going to return out of that. And then here we would say return um, tag object. Nope, that's not right. That's still the same function. We're not returning a nair if there's no tag isn't the same name. And then if the error is not nil and the error is not equal to tag found error, we would return nil and error. So no, I think this is this would be returning the tag object when we found it, right? Because here we're returning nothing. Here we're returning nothing and the error if uh, we get anything other than tag not found or tag found. Tag found means we want to return the tag, so. I believe that's when we would return the object. Let me comment some things just to make sure that I have that right. Um, if t.name is equal to tag, then Yeah, I think that's right, okay. Oh, I need to check though. I need to say if the tag object is nil. Well, it would be nil anyway, right? It's either gonna be empty or it's gonna be a tag object. Cool. And I think um, then we would use this in the run. Oh yeah, this is going to work fine. So then we will have either a nil value or an object. If the tag object is not nil, um, I don't think that works that way. I think I actually have to specify. Yep. It's not nil. If the tag object is not nil, then we want to prompt the user to you reuse the tag, so or not. Prompt them to reuse the tag or not. Um, and if that's the case, let me write down the workflow here. If the tag is not nil, prompt. Tag from user they want reuse tag. If 
if yes, check out tag by hash. I guess we want to ask if they want to overwrite too. So check out the tag by the hash. Continue. So really, we want to we want to ask if they. If the hash exists, would they like to continue using the hash? Would they like to overwrite the hash? Or would they like to quit? I guess we could we could just prompt them for all of those, right? We can say overwrite. Um, this was the easiest way to do that. We don't need to prompt them twice. Yeah, but that's fine. Okay. So then we want to say like. code go. Here we go. Watch out, Kelly. Wind's trying to blow my door closed. for this too. I think it's in a root.
You know what, I can just give him a... Like a list to choose from. I'm probably making this more complicated than it needs to be right now, at this exact moment. I could go back and do something more fancy later. Um, Clipboard, did I copy this to? Nothing. Didn't copy a thing. I guess we could say if they've only provided a tag. Yeah, I think you're right. I am definitely over engineering, but I'm not sure how to like back myself out of it. other folks want to 
check that out. Where did I put my browser? Don't over engineer the fizz buds. All right. Okay, I think this is just inspirational. Just keep it simple, yeah. Looking at some of this, I think you think I'm a better programmer than I really am. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I'm definitely, uh, definitely over-engineering it. All right, here we go. If the tag exists and they haven't provided an overwrite flag, then just use the tag. If they have provided an override flag, then overwrite it with, yeah, okay. And don't bother prompting, right? Maybe. That could be dangerous. But you know, it's on them to use the tag, the correct tag. We can prompt them to continue. Okay, and we've got a function for that. Perfect. Perfect. So I just gotta tell them. Okay, much better. Thank you, thank you for that, I appreciate it. Yeah, seriously, what fun is it without the opportunity to like accidentally overwrite your uh, releases? <laughs> You know, programming's a little bit like Dwarf Fortress. What fun is it without any danger? What fun is it without any uh, any failure? Oh, beautiful. This is so much easier. Thanks for that, Darren. I, I really appreciate it. <laughs> I can just use the confirm function.
Um, no, I'm not sharing the right window. Thank you. Sorry about that. I need a button that I can press and hold to switch over to the browser. And then as soon as I let go and put my hands back on the keyboard, it goes back to the code. <laughs> or, I don't know, maybe put the browser up on the side or something. I don't know. I haven't added anything interesting. I just, uh, I'm going to flag uh, whether or not they provided an overwrite flag and uh, prompt them to continue. And now I'm going to go add that overwrite flag real quick to the, uh, to the root. That should be easy enough. object hash or maybe the tag object commit what is the tag let's let's look at the structure here tag object hash plumbing hash the target object all right so we need to change this into allow it to accept a plumbing hash instead of a code okay thank you um, yeah we're taking a string it's nil then we're just returning the repository so we could make this a hash instead type of a uh, plumbing hash. It's an empty byte slice. This is a nil type of an empty byte slice. It's just an empty byte slice, right? Um, so if it's empty, Must not be the right way to do it. All right, 
I'm going to try this again. Oh, so if it's zero, it's empty. Okay, fair enough. All right. You can see the code now. Okay, cool. So, thanks, Darren. Thanks for stopping by. It was good to see you. Thanks for your help. Yeah, you were uh, been a good guide. Thank you for uh, basically pair programming with me. <laughs> it was a good learning experience for me. Have a good evening. All right, so I think that's going to work fine. And we're just going to say we'll take the commit ish because we don't need a new hash. But we will have to change the input to make sure that there's a new hash for each of those. So. Going back up to 216, I think. I'm going to say Tag target is exactly what I want. It's got its own hash, but we want to check out the target hash. Right?
All right, for overriding, then we're going to go ahead and do what we had planned to do. With just the commitish. Right, because we have Overriding, we're going to override it with the committish um, plumbing hash. Otherwise, going to check out the repo with the target hash. Okay, so then we're I think that we're going to create the tag but only if we're over well either way, right? no, if we're not overriding we don't create a tag we create a tag if we are overriding in a use case if, uh, if we're not overriding and the tag doesn't exist so we need a default flow man flow order of operations um, say basically if we're overwriting or we're creating a new tag that's going to be the default choice so we can say um, if uh, not overriding and just use the existing tag otherwise in every other case go ahead and create a tag
All right, I think that flow is correct. Okay, so we get a tag object from the string that the user's provided. If the tag object is not nil, that means it already exists. And we prompt the user and say, hey, the already, tag already exists, would you like to continue? If overwrite has been provided as a flag, it's going to overwrite the existing tag with the provided committer branch. If overwrite hasn't been provided as a flag, we just say this will use the existing tags commit to continue. Would we like to continue? And if not, we return. Then, if overwrite has not been set and the user has gone ahead and continued, we didn't exit out, then we'll say, we're gonna create a, check out the commit from the uh, existing tag object, target. Um, otherwise, if we are overriding or it's a brand new tag, then we just go ahead and check out a commit that was provided by the user, um, which may or may not just immediately return because they've also provided a branch and we've got that. And then we create the tag, overriding the existing tag or um, creating a new tag. Yes. Yes, I think that works. I think that works. Okay. Let's give it a shot. We're going to say we're going to run it without uh, overwrite. And we're using tag V01. prompting me. This will use the existing tags commit. Yes, go ahead and do it. Yep. And it did a thing. Let me have it maybe output uh, something in the create tag section. Right, because we, that's right, because we uh, um gutted the create tag thing. I still should have prompted us. Okay, we're not even getting to create tag. Why is that? Oh, right, because we're using the existing tag. So all it does is check out the commit, which is 96C, uh, 96C0, uh, 7. I think it's correct. Let's go double check. Tag V, whatever, whatever. 968C07F. Beautiful. Okay. All right. And then um, if we say that we do not have a new tag. We're going to go with V2. Fair. Seg faults because I didn't provide it uh, the right information, which is good. And then I'm going to give it a commit. Um, We have not provided the overwrite, so this should use the same commit hash. Okay, beautiful. And now we're going to give the overwrite flag. We're going to get a new prompt. This will overwrite the existing tag with the provided committer branch, yes. Um, but I am have an extra message in there somewhere. So I 
do need an else statement here. halted by user and now I'm going to say yes and it should replace the tag information yep prompts me for a thing Yes, I've got a new new hash and prompted me. So yeah, that's working great. That's working exactly as we need it to. And let's say if we provide, let's see what the commit hash is for the test branch. Test branch is at AF something something. So let's try that and make sure we get the branch correct. Yep, uses the existing and then overwrite should get AF something something. Reference not found, so we can fix that though. So in here, this is not a fair test. Something is wrong here. Let's, let's uh, format. Right, because it's a byte slice of 20 length. So checking if it's empty is not going to help. But we know that this is... Uh, I mean, we know that's literally the empty commit hash, right? That's an empty byte slice. So we can just store this. There's probably a better way to do this, but we're gonna go ahead and say uh, var empty commit slice is uh, that.
Is that right? It's an array, it's not a slice. It's an array. Yeah, so keep an empty array, huh? Whites dot equal. Whites dot contains. Yeah, I guess it needs to be like. Yeah, okay, same thing I was expecting to do. All right, so I just basically get an empty. Uh, size uh, 20 byte array <laughs> what's up Sal yeah no kidding check out stack overflow like try to figure out what I'm doing wrong it's fun times um, so we want to make an array of 20, a byte array of 20, and then we can compare down, I don't know, somewhere, wherever we put our function here. If commitish. Spend most of your dev time looking for excellent examples of what you want in our repo. For real, I was writing a thing today and I uh, just was grepping through other Git commits that I'd been working in just to see, like, oh, I think there's an example of me doing this already somewhere else, and I'd done it and still couldn't remember. <laughs> so let's, let's look back at that Stack Overflow again. Bytes.equal or bytes.contains. Oh yeah, that's exactly what we need. Bytes the module compare the, the two. Easy enough. Okay. If uh bytes dot equal Commitish and empty commit array. There's got to be a better way to do this, but uh, works for me. Oh, come on now. This is gonna this is gonna throw me off I think. So I can't use the commit ish. Um, I can't compare it as a byte array, even though the underlying 
thing is a bite array. Which is fair, I guess. I could create an empty plumbing hash, right? How do you, how would I create an empty plumbing hash? Uh, Say, looks like they've already done the helper for me. If, uh, let's see, if commit ish dot uh, zero. Well, that works, I suppose. That works. Let's try it. Let's try the same thing. Actually, let me uh, add some debug. Wait, did I get there? Failed creating tag. Tag already exists. Okay, so we're checking correctly. We're just not... Those are checkout options. Yeah, so this is all working. returned perfectly, just like it said it would. So now we need to go back to, not that. No, go. Hey, Steve H and H, how's it going, man? Uh, today we're working on that uh, command line Go uh, tool to build and tag releases. And at the moment, um, I think we've got through some interesting, fun things. But now we're trying to figure out if uh, we're doing the right thing, trying to create a uh, tag that already exists. So we've got a function here, create tag. When we when we run it, we get you know failed creating tag tag already exists. There's got to be a way to <laughs> trying to do some release automation. Sure thing, man. You can have at it. This is a this is all public code. Um, suppose I could share it. Let me see if I can get the uh, text thing working. Uh, I'm gonna be I'm gonna try to be fancy here. Super fancy. Get rid of the, that and we'll put this up. You know, it's good. Uh, it's good to get people who uh, care about what you're working on.
Muscleat is asking why go. Um, well, that's uh, that's what my team works in, so that's why. <laughs> there you go, Steven. <laughs> There's the code. He said line 147 is you. Let's take a look at line 147. I need to copy that uh, as well. Copy and paste it here. Shrink that down as well. There. So line 147, yeah, got here. <laughs> no kidding. You know, uh, honestly, the uh, I was just thinking, you know, I write these messages to myself and I had a typo in one of them while I was doing the stream. I think I said it was something like uh, that print line is zero, but I, you know, typoed it. So it was like zero P. And uh, I went back and changed it to is zero because of the stream. But if this were me in real life, I would have just left it like is zero. <laughs> so, uh, you know, honestly, that uh, I should just use numbers because it doesn't really matter. <laughs> All right. So we're getting there and then trying to create the repository. We get tag already exists, and that's probably coming from pushed push tags. Or maybe set tag. Let's see. Let's use another one of those fancy uh, messages with the extra um, pluses so that I can see it in the log lines. Oh, no kidding. Like, your flow isn't even going the way you thought it was. That's the worst. Um, you know, VS Code has a, a stepping debugger. And uh, I need to I take the time to learn how to use it. <laughs> that would certainly make my life easier. All right, let's see where we're getting here. I'm trying to overwrite the branch. Prompts me... Uh, I need to change my editor because I can't do this well. I need to change the whole default editor. I don't know why this is uh, back to nano. Alright. PDB set trace. I didn't even know about that. I bet that would be uh, extremely helpful. <laughs> All right. So we got tag failed. Already exists. Um, only in set tag. So it's failing here. It's not letting us set the tag because it already exists. So I bet you. Oh, that's my own code. Look at that. <laughs> um, and this is also my own code. Man, I'm way down in the weeds here. PDB breaks at certain points and you can step through the code from there. That's cool. I like that. I need to figure out how to do that for Go. Okay, we're creating a tag. Wait, this is, is this my code? This is not my code. This is something far more important than my code. All right, well, that's good. Let's 
so I can provide uh, create tag options. So I, I don't think, let's see, create tag. If the tag exists, just bomb out. Okay, well. That simplifies our code a lot. We can't handle a use case that I was thinking we would handle, but the code should certainly be... Code leading up to that's more simple. Unfortunately, that does mean I have to delete a whole bunch of code that I just wrote. Um, because we can't create a new tag if the tag exists. I should have known that. So there is no overwrite feature, um, we really just want to confirm that we want to continue and it will use the tag itself. So that's simpler. So if the tag is not nil and the user hasn't provided the force flag, we're going to prompt them. And if they want to bomb out, they can bomb out. Um, otherwise, if the tag doesn't exist, we can go ahead and create one. Check out the commit. Uh, I need to think. I, th I need to think through the logic. I need to think through the logic. If the tag does not exist, um, we create a tag. So really, we can have this in here. Check out the existing tag commit. No need to create a tag that already exists. Otherwise, And this is the else right here. If the tab tag out tag object um, does exist, oh, I'm doing this backwards. Can't uh, can't think through my own code here.
Okay. If the tag already existed, just check out the tag commit hash. Otherwise, if the tag didn't exist, Sure, bump up the font and drop the terminal. Hope that helps, let me know. I promise you I'm gonna to forget to drop the terminal. Um, just like I forget to remove the browser window over my code um, when I switch back to it, so. All right, so. If the tag is not nil, if we already have a tag, then check out the tag commit pointing to the target there. Otherwise, check out the hash and create a tag. Perfect. I think that'll work because if there's no chance that we're going to create a tag if it already exists. It's only in the case statement. And we can simplify this even further, I think, by swapping this. If uh, tag object is nil, um, do this. Say var hash is of type um, plumbing that hash. And if the repo or the tag does not exist, then commit hash. to get back to Golang, started writing an app and got frustrated and pivoted back to Python. Yeah, I, you know, there's nothing to be, I wouldn't say there's anything to be uh, ashamed about when you're running out of time under pressure and a deadline and you jump back to something you know. Everything that you did in that Go, stuff that you were working on was a learning experience. But uh, for sure, jump back on the wagon. Come, uh, come back around to the dark side. <laughs> See, I'm doing it backwards again. It should be the other way around, but the variable is the important part. So we want to keep the variable and set the commit hash to tag object dot target. So this is this is the commit hash tag object that target um, and we can remove I lost the tag thing hold on yep 
So we're going to say Golang, Python, then Python with a different library that a friend recommended. Nice. I've written the same app three times. <laughs> Jared's forcing himself to try to learn Golang after giving it up a couple times too. Yeah, um, I did the same thing. When I was working at the previous job, I tried several times to learn Go and had trouble picking it up. Um, it wasn't until I got here and had to do it for real at work that uh, I was able to pick it up a little bit easier. Yeah, nice. That's a good way to do it. at all, am I? Because I still have to write, yeah, I still have to have that if statement out there. So I'm du basically doubling, I have to do the code twice, but uh, there's not a way to make that any simpler. So. So if it's nil and we don't need to force it, we can check out the commit. Otherwise, we check out the commit using the new hash from the commit-ish and create a tag. That should work. Oh, Steven, you know, this typing stuff, uh, it sucks at first, but... Uh, I really started to like it after a while. It kind of forces you to like know what each thing is like, and you can't accidentally act upon it in a way that you weren't expecting and uh, guaranteed to know like what each piece is, what everything contains. Like it's, it actually works pretty nice. My dog is trying to tell me something. Hold on a second. I think she's trying to tell me she needs to go out. I will be right back. She just wanted attention. <laughs> Didn't need anything. Just uh, want somebody to look at her. All right. Well, let's see if this works. Um, all right. Um, we got a we got a tag. say it's going to use the existing tag and yes it used the existing tag for v1 and now if we say oh uh, with a branch nice and then 
I could also just say like force and I'll go ahead and do it. Cool. And if we give it a different tag, the commitish, something a little nicer. It's gonna go ahead and create a tag. It's gonna, well, prompt me anyway. Um, push a tag it did something maybe it pushed a tag let's see um, it's the wrong repository let's see hello world two tags look at that one of them with the new release <laughs> excellent nice Nice, so we are, and it, when we're at time too, so this is perfect. We, we accomplished something right at the end here. I think uh, we're in pretty good shape. Now, now, what we can do Thursday, when we get back to this, um, we can first of all remove this. No more exit. We're gonna start working on the make builds. And uh, the idea behind the make build is, uh, any project that uh, we want to build, as long as it's got a make file and a make target um, that will build their artifacts, we can go ahead and kick off that process. And actually, I think that bit, that bit already works. So what we're going to be doing on Thursday is trying to identify those artifacts and upload them after we create a release. So for example, before we get there, We've got this make file for go hello world that uses the target uh, build release, which ends up doing a build of the binaries, um, tests them, and then uh, in that repository that we check out the temporary repository, we should have a binary named go hello world. And you, you don't see any of that because I didn't put the browser back up here. <laughs> right, so go hello world my test repository has the make file. The make file has the build release target, which does the tests and the builds. So let's test that real quick. And then if that works, that'll be a perfect thing to end on. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the defer for the temporary directory. Uh, or remove the remove. So that we can go inspect it but I think I think what we can do is pass it the latest build let's get the right hash number right commit number um, say does test branch have the make file test branch does have the make file but it's empty um, so back in main yeah this is the commit we want to use so So let's see if this works. Fingers crossed. We're going to build a little Go binary and see the output. Let's say with V3, that'll create a V3 tag using current main branch, but uh, we could also just not specify commit. Um, and it should build from the main branch as well, but let's try this out. Okay, cloned it. It's asking me for the commit message. Um, it's pushing the tag. Looks like it built something. Let's go check it out. I'm getting so close now. So close. <laughs> Beautiful. 
All right, so basically all we got to do is identify, is figure out how to identify these files. And I think by just saying there's going to be a, a bin directory and anything in the bin directory is going to be one of the files, that would probably work. And as long as your uh, make file knows how to put the build artifacts into the right location, we can just upload all of them. So success, success. Excellent work today. Thank you everybody that stopped by. Uh, Darren's gone already, but he was like a pair programmer for me for like an hour and it was extremely helpful. Um, Jared and Steven, it was good to see you guys. Um, everybody else that was here earlier. Uh, Sal was here. Um, Squid Moth was here for a little while. Sub was here. Thanks everybody for hanging out. Dr. Phineas, that's right. How can I forget you with your fantastic, uh, what's his name? Solus, Solius, uh, emoji. <laughs> but yeah, cool. We'll check it out. Uh, we'll be back doing this Thursday again and, uh, I'll catch you guys, uh, on the flip side. Y'all have a good evening. Ah, oh, Stealth King. That's right. You were here too. It's good to see you all. Thank you. It was, you know, just showed up still. Good timing. <laughs>